Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, we're talking about dressing for the body you have and looking great. And I'm sitting down with the number one fashion influencer on YouTube for women over 40. You are not going to want to miss this episode. If you're a woman over 40 and you are looking to lose weight for the last time, you are in the right spot. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin and I'm your host. And we all know that we need to move more and eat less, but why don't we do it? I give clients the skill sets they need through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset, because that's the missing piece to all this. So if you've tried a ton of diets and are still looking for the latest and greatest 12 week workout program and still haven't seen results, It's the mindset part that is missing for you. So when you become a client, you will not just learn how to lose a weight, but you're going to learn how to keep it off for life. I hope you will enjoy this podcast. And when you're ready to lose the weight for the last time, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and schedule your strategy session where possibility starts and results begin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm really excited to be talking to my special guest today. She is the go-to style and beauty expert for busy women over 40 juggling life. She provides simple step-by-step guidance through relatable video tutorials, how-to blog posts, and key shopping suggestions. Her mission is to empower women to become the best, most stylish version of themselves. Welcome to the show, Erin Busby of Busby Style. Thank you so much, Nicole. I'm so happy to be here. And I love that you and I both have very similar missions in trying to help women, you know, look their absolute best and be the best version of themselves. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. I am so excited for you to be here. Um, Yeah, I find that women over 40, not only do they feel like they can never lose weight, but they also just gravitate to frumpy styles or moo's or something that's covering up all the all the stuff under there. (laughs) So, and I have to say, I'm probably your worst nightmare on fashion (laughs) because when I, back in the day, I was a professional ballet dancer. And if you rolled out looking like you came from the consignment shop and it was like the late nineties. So, you know, everything was ripped. It was off the shoulders. It was layers. It was cut t-shirts. And I don't know, I think I've progressed as I've gotten older in fashion, but no way close to probably like, <laughs> you're probably embarrassed to go out with me for sure. No, I think, I think you would be like the perfect viewer for me or the perfect reader because you're sort of a blank canvas in that sense. You know, you don't um, have a lot of preconceived ideas about style and it's something that can easily be learned and there are simple formulas and it doesn't have to be a passion. You really can just have like maybe a style uniform that you know works really well for your body type and then wear that uniform every single day, just, vi- you know, variations of that uniform. Um, so I think that we would, we would definitely rock it in public. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Though they have to invent sneakers that look like high heels, like comfortable. Oh, they have. Heels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're called wet. They're called wedge sneakers or oh. platform sneakers. Oh, well, so I have wedges. I do like wedges. Yeah, I do too because I'm petite. <laughs> I am petite also. I think um, so. I binge watched a lot of your YouTube's in preparation for this interview, and I loved every single one of them. And one of the things I love is I think you said you were five four. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like five, two on a good day. So (laughs) definitely looking for something that elongates something that makes you look taller and yeah. And leans you out for sure. Um, a whole video for you. It's called look taller if you're petite. (laughs) (laughs) So you should go back and watch that one. Yeah. I don't know if I caught that one. I literally, I, I think I watched like 20 of the episodes, but it was awesome. Um, so definitely if you're listening, definitely go check out her YouTube channel. I will have all the links uh, available at shapeitupfitness.com and you can click over there at any time to watch that. So um, I saw that you were an award-winning journalist, most notably at CBS in New York, and have appeared as a style expert on Good Morning America and CBS 2 News this morning. So what really brought you to starting your own business, Busby Style? Yeah, so I worked in television news for about a decade, and my last job was in New York City. 
And in New York, I met and married my husband, who is from Texas. And he really wanted to be back in Texas to look after his mom, who was quite sick. And he said, what do you think about that? You want to move to Texas? And at that point, I had been in New York a long time. I don't know if you have been to the city or you know a lot about the city, but like, I feel like after a while, you kind of, you get a little beat down and you're ready for something new. Mm -hmm. So we moved to Texas. And when, when I was in Texas, I was looking around and kind of making the rounds to the local news stations and just realizing that I didn't want to stay in it anymore. I wasn't passionate about it anymore. I didn't love the newsroom and the, the energy and the vibe anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my husband said, well, what would you do for free? And I said, wow, um, I want to help women look pretty. <laughs> Sounds silly, right? But no. that was really what I wanted to do. And so I started my wardrobe consulting business shortly afterwards, and then just tapped into those new skills. Like you know, got booked on the local lifestyle show as a style expert, really utilizing those media skills so that I could get the word out about my services. Mm -hmm. And then after five years of seeing clients one-on-one, -on -one, I pivoted again so I could scale my business and grow the business to being totally online. And so I was able to share my style tips that I had learned as, you know, a uh, style at wardrobe stylist working one-on-one -on -one women, with women, with women all over the world through my website and my YouTube channel. So I'm six years now into oh. my online business. Awesome. That's awesome. Now I know we have some other things in common. Um, I believe you said that you didn't have your kids until you were in your thirties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I didn't even get married until I was 30. <laughs> so I like... met my husband at 31. We got married when I was 33 and I had my first kid at 35. Mm. Second at 38. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So comparatively, I'm an older mom and yes. I think that has advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> I 100% agree. Not that this uh, podcast is about that, but like, <laughs> I just know, I know one of the things you had said too, was like in my twenties, I could not have imagined, let alone being married, but having two kids. Like I, it was the world I came from. It was very, and I would imagine if you were working in the um, TV industry, it's the same thing. It's like, you're very involved and it's very like, that's how I was with ballet. It was so mm -hmm. involved your entire life. You just didn't have any time to spend to give to two little kids. <laughs> That's sure. right. I, yeah, I, I didn't think about the career as part of that piece of the puzzle, but you're right. I think I had this really amazing career and it was very fulfilling and I loved it. And I think that did consume me for a long time. And then the other piece of the puzzle for me, at least, is that I don't think I was mentally ready to have children. <laughs> like I needed to work on myself. <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah. I hear that. that too. I don't even know if 30 I was ready. <laughs> Biologically <laughs> speaking, it had to kind of happen at that point. <laughs> Tell everybody, like, what is the number one issue in women's wardrobes? Uh, when I was seeing clients, I would say that literally 99% of the time, the problem that women are having with their wardrobe not functioning properly is that they don't have their wardrobe basics. And they're just those essential pieces that you wear day in and day out. And the reason why women don't have them is because you walk into a store or you're shopping online and you're gravitating toward like the sparkly, the shiny, the fun, those fun pieces that are just more exciting to buy, right? They mm -hmm. catch our eye. They're fun. And the problem is if you buy a closet full of those pieces, then you have nothing to wear them with. So really women should be investing like 80% of their, their budgets in those wardrobe basics and then leaving like the, the last 20% for, for the fun pieces, the trendy pieces. So not having those basics, it will really, your, your wardrobe won't function. It's just like your home. Your home, your home needs mm. a solid foundation to, you know, to work. Uh, the wardrobe needs those wardrobe basics to function. So my husband loves to buy me clothes mm. and which is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is very interesting. Do yeah. tell. <laughs> he actually doesn't have that bad of taste, <laughs> but oh, good. the good. problem that I find is exactly what you're saying. Like he'll buy like a shirt or a skirt or a pair of pants 
and I'll tell him, I'm like, you need to buy the entire outfit, like head to toe so I can like put it together. <laughs> because if you just buy these random pieces, you know, like the colors are off. I mean, I do know, even though I'm not like a fashionista or anything by that, any stretch of the imagination, but like, I do understand colors have to match <laughs> and things like that. Um, patterns, you know, you can't pair different patterns together. So yeah, I totally get the basic um, wardrobe. That would be very helpful to any woman. For sure. You can mix patterns though. So that's not true. Uh, <laughs> the key to mixing prints is to choose one color story. So let's just make it simple and say black and white. Okay. And then within that color story, choose like, let's say a top that is a larger scale print and a bottom with a smaller scale print. Oh, interesting. And that's the formula. Hmm. I think that is advanced level fashion. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ease you into it, Nicole. Yes. Start with the basics of it. <laughs> um, so do women have to spend a lot of money to look like a million bucks? Absolutely not. I think that if you can, you know, go back to that 80, 20 rule of spending 80% of your budget on the basics and 20% on the fun and really drilling down and making sure that you do invest um, the majority of your budget in those high quality basics. That said, you know, we have a lot of resources at our disposal, tools in our toolbox. You know, we can go to flash sale websites that sell designer goods at up to 75% off, like mm -hmm. La La, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, we have consignment stores that are amazing. We have online consignment stores that are amazing. Um, so if you can figure out like, here's what I need based on my wardrobe basics checklist, then you can then make that strategic search for something that's higher quality, but for a lot less. Oh, awesome. That's a great tip. I did not know about, I've heard of flash sales. <laughs> I have <laughs> nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I just, am going to say this proceed with caution because a site like Rue La La is addictive. It I'm is. I'm sure it's like Pinterest. Like I get into Pinterest and I am like six <laughs> hours later, like clawing my way out. <laughs> it's the vortex. Yes, yes, it sure is. So you um, have two kids, right? I do. I have a, a daughter who's eight and my son just turned 11 like two days ago. Oh, wow. So I also have a son and a daughter. My son is the oldest. He is 15 and my, he just turned 15 and my daughter is 13. So we are entering oh. into the teen zone and the perimenopausal phase. <laughs> I so, told my husband he should leave for wow. 10 years <laughs> and come back. You need to like write down your key tips so that you can share them with all of us so that <laughs> I'll know what to do when I get there because I'm so scared of those teen years. I am too. You know, so far it hasn't been too bad. They're still in the beginning phases. Um, my son is very easygoing. My daughter is very headstrong and very <laughs> strong-willed. Mm. So we'll see. One but isn't that so great that your daughter's the one that's headstrong? It, yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been told that she's very much like her mother. So, mm. and my mom cursed me when I was pregnant saying, I hope you have a daughter exactly like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've already put that curse on my daughter. So um, we're done with that. Check that off the list. <laughs> well, good. That's a good thing. I yeah. love it. Get strong. Yeah. yeah. We'll see um, how she develops and hopefully in a, I always tell her, use your powers for good, not for evil. Like, let's keep it in check. <laughs> <laughs> so as a busy mom, how do you juggle everything? I mean, you have a business. I'm sure you, you obviously take care of your family and all that. How do you juggle it? Yeah, it's funny because I used to use the word balance. And then um, I think I was listening to a podcast um, of a friend of mine and she said, you know, that balance doesn't exist. And I do believe that's true. I think you have these moments in life or these moments in time where you're just like rocking it as a mom. And then you have moments where you're like, yes, I'm the best wife ever. And then you have moments where your business is blowing and going and you're just you're, you're killing it in business. Um, but really the key for me is setting really firm boundaries because I do have a, a business that's based a lot on social media. And so I can get sucked into that vortex. Let's, let's face it. That is a for sure vortex. Mm -hmm. And so I have to set really firm boundaries. Otherwise it would be so easy for me to work 24 seven. And then the other thing is, you know, just setting priorities. Like my family is my priority and everything revolves around that. 
Um, and then outsourcing everything that I can outsource. I mean, everything. And it's one of those things that like, at first you're like, yeah, I don't know if I can outsource this and that, especially with business. And then once you start doing it, you're like, oh yes, I can outsource this. I can outsource that. I can outsource this. It becomes very easy and and lovely. You, you see the benefits of it and it's terrific. So I have a whole team of people that help me with my business now. And, um, and it's just, it's really awesome. I'm very proud of, of the team and, and, and of the business and the community that I've created. So I would say, yeah, outsourcing, setting boundaries and setting your priorities. Did you imagine when you first started your business that you would be doing what you like, like the extent of your business? Cause you have a huge following on YouTube. I mean, it's funny. I was just talking to somebody the other day and I was like, you know, when I was younger, I had these goals, you know, you have these, these goals that you say out loud when you're younger. So when I was younger, I was like, I want to be a lifestyle. Like I want to host a lifestyle show. And one of the other things I said when I was younger is, which is really hilarious and kind of embarrassing is I said, I want I wanted to be a model. Right. Why which is that I embarrassing? Mean, it's so <laughs> embarrassing. I'm sorry. Like I'm five, four, and, <laughs> like it's never going to happen as a five, four um, woman. And so, and I, and I just don't look like a model. Right. So anyway, now that I'm 45, I'll be 46 in a couple weeks. Um, I'm just realizing like, oh my gosh, I'm the host of my own lifestyle show. It's on YouTube and I love it. It's amazing. And I also am my own model for my website. I model clothes all the time. I mean, it's not taking the form and shape that I thought it might. Um, but it's kind of interesting when you have that hindsight and you kind of look back at how everything is woven together and how it all comes together. Yeah. The power, you talk a lot about mindset, the power of mind, mindset and manifestation. It's really cool. Yeah. Actually, that was my next question. So what type of mindset do you think has really helped you? Um, I don't know why I've always had this feeling that I can accomplish anything I put my mind to. And that has been there uh, like ever since I can remember having memories. Like I just came out thinking that way. And so, and that was reinforced a lot by my mom, which was terrific. And I've just always known that if I really want to do something, I'm going to find a way to make it happen. And so that has, that has served me incredibly well. I mean, it's like blind faith almost. Um, but I also actively like work toward mindset and manifestation. So I have like a vision board on my desktop with my goals, you know, my body goals, my money goals, my house goals, my kid goals. And then, um, I do hypnosis a lot, which is really cool and wonderful. Um, and then I'm looking into some other alternative therapies like EMDR. I'm really fascinated by that. Um, I don't know if you're into all that stuff, but <laughs> um, no, I definitely the vision board for sure. I haven't tried hypnosis. Um, now what type of hypnosis are you talking like tapes under your bed that talk in the middle of the night or like someone who no, comes just in like and... a, like a 12 minute, you know, kind of re reset your brain kind of oh, cool. hypnosis. Yeah. Yeah. Where you just get into a relaxed state and then they feed you positive thoughts. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, I think that there, you know, I think there's some things that are very, what I call woo, you know, like yeah. there, uh -huh. and I think it's really whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and like the fact that you have this mentality of like, like uh, just like tunnel vision, basically like you have your mindset on something and you're mm -hmm. going after it. I think that is like the key to everything whether that's fitness, weight loss, you know, starting your own business and stuff, because our brains constantly are like, you suck. You can't do that. You're horrible. You're, you know, why are you trying? Just sit down, watch Netflix. Don't do anything. Eat a bag of chips, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's okay. And, um, I think we tend to constantly go back and we're pulled, you know, and unless you have that driven and that focus um, and it doesn't even have to be something huge. It could be something like I'm going to walk for five minutes on the treadmill today. Um, 
but that no take no prisoners type attitude I just love because that's how I feel whenever I've wanted to accomplish anything in my life I'm like you know mm-hmm. I try to like ignore the negative voices but I love that you um, are just driven that way and whatever gets you there, I say, go for it. You know, whether it's hypnosis, whether it's, you know, meditation, whether it's um, like, I read a lot of um, self-help books, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. I think that is so key to, because especially when you're over 40, things are changing. Mm -hmm. You're realizing, I feel like at 40, you're kind of coming into who you are and really understanding like in your twenties, you know, you're worried about what other people think of you and, um, and, and who you are and who you're becoming as an adult. And then like thirties is usually, I know in our case, it was like kid time. So Mm -hmm. you're like just in the muck with that, (laughs) just trying to survive basically. Yeah. Survival mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in the forties, it's like freedom. Yeah. Like what do you really want to accomplish and what do you want to do? And I love that because, um, you know, if anybody's listened to the podcast, I'm talking, some of the people that I talk to are like, oh, it's over at 40. And yeah, which is why I love bringing people on like you, because I want people to know, I want women to know that life is not ending at 40. It's not ending at 50. It doesn't end until it ends. And what you decide to do with your life is your decision. And what are you going to do with it? Are you going to sit on the couch for the next 40 years or are you going to go do something? So I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's never too late to start over too. I mean, I think women are scared to like pivot or try something different, but I mean, I've pivoted how many times I can't have lost count and I'm about to pivot again. So, um, you know, it's, it's absolutely never too late. Yeah. I think that's what makes life exciting too, because like, if you don't, if change is inevitable, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. and I think change is always levels everybody up. It makes you a better version of yourself for sure. Definitely. So um, off camera, we were talking a little bit about um, this checklist that you have for everybody. So can you tell everybody about that? Yeah. So if I made a special link for your listeners. So, you know, we talked about the wardrobe basics before and how important those are to your wardrobe. And it's really kind of the cornerstone, the foundation of your wardrobe. And so I do give out wardrobe basics checklists for free that your listeners can download and they just go to busbystyle.com. And that's like busy bee without the Y style.com slash backslash shape it up. That's it. And then they just sign up with their email and then they can download the checklist. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for giving that out to everybody. Of course. For anybody that missed that link or needs the spelling of it, you can head to shapeitupfitness.com. Just click on this episode and all her show notes, all the show notes will be in there. All the links will be in there. Um, I'll also have links to your YouTube channel and any of the social medias that you are on for sure. So everybody can check you out. Um, And definitely go check out her videos because some of them are hysterical. Some of them are really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love the one with the makeup when you're Did putting you on the, the liner with the oh, lips. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and the hair. Yeah. Very 80s. It was yeah. bad. It was bad. No, <laughs> it wasn't bad at all. It was very, um, it was humorous. I loved it because like, I do, I mean, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and I remember putting the lip liner on. Um, mm-hmm. I don't put lip liner on anymore, but, um, and even, you know, I, um, I did listen to one of your playlists. I think it was the over 41 and there was one that you shared when it was your 40th birthday. And that was very, I'm sure very personal for you to share and very vulnerable and exposing. And, you know, I, I think women who are turning 40 or, you know, beyond they, well, the people that are coming up to 40 need to watch that video because it's true. There was a lot of uh, emotion that came out of you. And, um, you know, you really did, uh, do, do, you did a deep dive for sure. Cause that video is like, Oh, I mean, I'm 46, I'm two weeks, (laughs) that's six years old. Um, but yeah, the playlist. (laughs) I think it's really important. I, in, in my channel, I don't just share fashion and beauty tips. I also talk about my own struggles. And I think it's really important to share that stuff, even though it's really hard to share. Um, because we all, you know, as over 40 women, we all are going through these struggles. We, we have these difficulties and challenges in life. And I think it's important to talk about them and share our experiences so that we can learn from each other and help each other. Yeah, I agree. Cause I think that's part of the problem 
with the generation that did not have social media as far as like, like that was one of the reasons why I pivoted in my business and started focusing on women over 40. I had also turned 40 and that was almost seven years ago. When's your birthday? By the July, way. 10th. July 10th. July 10th. Oh, happy birthday. It's coming up. Mine's in yeah. August. So okay. um, I'll be 47. I'm not too far ahead of you, but well, happy I know. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I know when I turned 40, I was like, there's nothing online for women over 40, like nothing. And I don't know if it was just, we didn't grow up with the internet and like, we didn't put things out there like the 20 year olds do. Um, but now I think there's definitely a lot more women coming forward in their forties and being like, yeah, we're going to rock this decade, you know, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, even like traditional magazines didn't feature older models until fairly recently. Yeah. When I entered the landscape on YouTube, there was no over 40 YouTuber. Um, now there are, there are handful, you know, there's like a, you know, a couple dozen or something, but, um, yeah, I think it's changing. I think, and, and also as I think as celebrities are, are getting older and, and showing the world like, Hey, you could still be amazing and glamorous over 40. I think that's also changing the landscape a lot, but you're right. I think social media has a, as a big role in that. Um, and, and just showing how vibrant, amazing, gorgeous, sexy women over 40 are. Yeah. Um, that was another one of the videos that I enjoyed too, like dressing sexy being over 40, because again, <laughs> most people are like, what? <laughs> yeah. You got to get out of the moo and, uh, <laughs> and, and still just embrace who you are and, and really be a sexy woman. Like we're still, we still feel young and youthful and vibrant. So why not dress the way that we feel? Yeah, yeah I agree. All right. Are you ready for the speed round? Okay. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For those who are listening, this is just, a, I'm going to throw some questions out at um, Erin today and we're just going to see what her answers are. All right. So question number one, do you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs. We have a golden retriever. Her name is Traveler. I love dogs. Oh, cool. I love yeah. dogs too. What is your favorite book and why? I would say anything by Brene Brown. I think she has like the roadmap for life or the secret mm. sauce for joy. And I really, I really connect with her, her mission and her messaging. Yeah. I read a couple of her books too. Um, what is your favorite movie? Uh, Um, I would have to say for favorite movie, this is challenging because there's so many good movies. And then also now I feel like there's so many great shows, mm. you know, almost like series are replacing the movie, mm -hmm. but my favorite movie is definitely the sound of music. I am a huge sound of music fan. Like I've done the tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, like I was on the bus doing the tour and I actually was crying because I was so move to be on the tour. That's what a nerd I am, basically. <laughs> Just so you know. Now where and is also, the tour? I I wanted to it's in Austria. Okay. I was gonna say I wanted to live my life like um Maria and live in the mountains. And I wanted to marry somebody like Captain Von Trapp. Um <laughs> like a tall, handsome, like tough guy. Uh and so I I live in Telluride, Colorado, which and we live on top of the mountain. So I am now, talk about the power of manifestation. Yeah. I am now living like Maria and I married um, my husband, Chris, who is very tall, tough, and speaks German. So I'm like, I, I basically married Captain Von Trapp. You so. did. Do you go I out did. on the mountain and like sing every now and then? <laughs> the hills are alive. Yeah, I was just like the other day thinking, oh, I need to do a blog post about this. And I need to do that recreation where she like spins around in the mountains. Just don't so. wear that outfit. If you're different fashion, no, I know, I know the, that. <laughs> it's like an apron. Yeah. But yeah. maybe I'll do the blue dress. You know, the blue dress she wears when she dances with Captain Von Trapp for the yeah. first time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. yeah. I remember watching that as a child. Every, um, I think it comes on at Easter. It used to come on and um, would watch it. And then I was very, very confused when Julie Andrews was Mary Poppins. Like I didn't understand oh. why she was blonde <laughs> and brown. Like it was very confusing for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that movie. That was an awesome, great soundtrack. Definitely well, Mary, a classic. Mary Poppins is legit too. That's a good one too. Yeah. Yeah. We're, um, we were supposed to watch Mary Poppins too. We haven't watched that. 
eh, reviews. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the verdict I, is still. Out. I started watching it, but I couldn't really no? get into it. Mm-mm. Okay. All right. I'll make sure I'll have a book nearby when their kids are watching. Nothing against <laughs> Emily Blunt because she's amazing, but you know, it's just like you can't recreate such an amazing original film. Yes, I agree 100%. They're running out of ideas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could choose only one song to play every time you walked into a room for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, I would have to say Alive by Sia. I don't know if you know that song. You know what? Know Listen to it later today and you'll see what I mean. Okay. It just is like, it's just like, I don't know. It just like gets you going. Yeah. You know, you're like, I'm alive, baby. I, I, I wanna- have to look at it. Yeah, I like to see it. I, she, does she sing Chandelier or something? She does. One. But you know, I got a little tired of that song because it's so <laughs> played and played and played and played. But um, yeah, Alive is good. You're going to like it. I'll definitely check that out. Okay, so last question. What is your favorite athletic event? Uh, very easy to answer that one. Definitely the New York City Marathon. Very cool. Which I've, I've run three times. And my husband oh. has run 22 consecutive New York City Marathons. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And they just announced it's canceled this year. Oh, my gosh. Are they going to do a virtual one? That's what seems to be the theme. Oh, really? I don't know. I don't even know if they could, what they would do. Um, so a friend of mine, um, if you check out the other podcast, she talks about a Disney run, which she, her podcast is all about Disney runs. And um, I also did a Disney run, just a 10K, but um, she did a virtual, one of the Disney runs was canceled and they did a virtual, like, I, I don't know exactly what they did, but basically you ran around your neighborhood. Okay. And then um, I think you got like a participation award or something along that lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so I'm from New Jersey. Okay. We're, we're in Jersey. South, the good part of Jersey. <laughs> yeah. No, no, listen. I know. Cause I lived in New York for so long. Like I know Jersey gets a bad rap, but, um, it is called the garden state. Like it's beautiful. Yeah. Now, Newark on the other hand, <laughs> not so good. Or Probably. Camden. <laughs> yeah. Not the no. prettiest, but yeah. no, I live in gorgeous. the Southern part, which is the cow's the farms, you know, mm-hmm. not too far from Philly, not too far from the shore, not too far from Delaware. So um, it's really beautiful here. But yeah, yeah, Jersey Dove definitely gets a bad rap. But there is a softer side to Jersey for sure. But yeah, so I've been to New York many times. Um, so I know what you're talking about when you talk about, you know, wanting to move and, and not be in that hustle and bustle environment. And I can't imagine Colorado is probably so polar opposite for sure. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah. night and day night and day. No, I mean, I remember like toward the end of living in New York, I was like, I just, I cannot take one more person shoulder checking me on the street. Like they would walk so, so close to you without any kind of sense of distance that they would actually bump into your shoulder with their shoulder. Yeah. And, um, I just like, I can't take that one more time or like the constant honking of the taxis. But I love New York, don't get me wrong. I, I go back every chance I can, just not right now during COVID, but. <laughs> no, no, for sure. Yeah, actually um, when I had finished, I was dancing in Virginia Beach and I was actually on my way to move to New York and I had a dog at the time. And the apartment that I went to go look at, I don't remember where it was, but it was literally like, imagine it was a walk-in apartment, but it was like a bathroom floor with a drain in the center of the room mm, mm. and had bars on the windows. <laughs> wow. That sounds like a fancy. Prison Let me tell you. Yeah. It was like a, a, you know, a one room. It had, I don't even know if it had a bathroom to be honest. Wait, with why you. were you looking at this apartment? <laughs> I was going to move to New York. I was a ballet dancer. I was like, oh, I got to okay. move to New York. So okay, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, I actually literally kind of ran into my husband. I was, wasn't going to get into the story, but I was in a car accident and my husband was my insurance agent, which is another long story. But so I literally <laughs> got into an accident and met my husband and decided to stay. So I, my New York Aww, journey ended very story. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it was fate. <laughs> That's so, cool. right. so let's wrap up one tip you can give the listeners that they can take away. would be awesome. I think that 
as women, we are juggling so many things that it's so easy to put you on the back burner, style on the back burner, how you look. It feels frivolous. It feels like unnecessary. But I just want to tell your listeners that it is okay to take care of you. Not, not only is it okay, it's essential because when you fill up your bucket and you take care of you, you have more to give everybody else. You're a better mom. You're a better wife. You're a better sister, friend, cousin, aunt. Um, it's just so important that you really take the time and make the time to take care of you. I think those are excellent tips that everyone can use, no matter whether you're over 40 or not, for sure. But all right, Erin, thank you so much for being on today. I really appreciate you taking the time out to spend with me and my listeners. And for everybody else, have a wonderful week. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you. If you are looking for quick and easy meals to put together that have minimal cleanup time, then I want to introduce you to the No Fuss, No Mess, Shape It Up cookbook. This is perfect for the non-chef who wants quick meals, minimal cleanup time, and a smaller waistline. Inside your cookbook includes healthy recipes with easy to find ingredients, time savers in the kitchen, easy cleanup, and most meals are made in one pot. Spend less time in the kitchen and more time doing the things that you love. The No Fuss, No Mess, Shape It Up cookbook. Now available at Amazon.com.